I think I'm a human being who has ideas, hypotheses, and opinions. Ideas, hypotheses, and opinions, if I can, and passion. I'm IHOP. I'm just IHOP. I have ideas, <laughs> hypotheses, opinions, and passion. I'm the new fucking IHOP. You got your perspective. I just want to be happy. Don't you want to be happy? Hey everybody, this is Gary Bay, Nerd Chuck, and this is another episode of Tea with Gary V. Uh, super excited. Um, I am uh, here on this beautiful, uh, what is it, Wednesday? Is it Thursday? Thursday morning. Uh, hope everybody's super well. Looking forward to the questions. Dustin, I don't see any questions in the queue, but I'll be ready for that in a second. Um, nonetheless, hope everybody's super well. Hope everybody's hanging in. Um, obviously it's a challenging time for a lot of people. And so hopefully we can give some Q and A here that brings some value uh, to people. Uh, my friend Aton called me this morning, told me this show's not good enough and it's not entertaining enough. So I'm gonna try to give better answers than ever. So uh, let's rock and roll. Aton, I'm just kidding, I love you bro. Lucas. Lucas, what's good? What's going on Gary, how are you? I'm well. What can I help you with? Thanks for uh, taking the time out of your day. I really appreciate this. Happy to do it, man. So just to give you a little bit of context, um, I'm a photographer. I have a YouTube channel where I document my process more on the side of film photography. Okay. So essentially, uh, the main premise of the channel is based around one show called Value Shooters. I Value go shooters. to the okay. thrift store. I pick okay. up a 35 millimeter camera like that's undervalued. And I... Uh, shoot with it, review it, and then I give it away to a member of the community after it's all done. Love so, that concept. Thank you. Uh, it's Honestly, it's inspired from everything that you do, That hence the name, Value Shooters. Um, I love it. And it kind of coincides with Value Village, which is kind of cool. But um, while I'm there, I'm also grabbing stuff to flip on eBay, which is another cool thing, because like now that everyone's staying inside, eBay stuff is flying off the shelves. But my question is, what it, like is it too early for the ask like i'm pretty early in the process i'm i'm super patient i'm not in a rush at all I'm not trying to look at like subs or anything so then the answer is yes if like if, if that's your mentality yeah. right then the the longer you hold out for the ask the better gotcha so a lot of people can't hold out for the ask right yesterday we had some people on tea with gary v who the musicians are so in trouble and i told her to flip it and do you know, donations, because like they had to go for ask right away. Yeah. If you're in a place where you're like, you know, it's funny, you picking up stuff at those places to flip on eBay is almost paying for your ability to not go in for the ask. No different than my public speaking allows me to not have to go in the ask for my audience. And I think that's a really great model. I think one of the things that makes me stand out from a lot of people is I'm not trying, like, as you know, you know, how long have you been following me? Uh, just over a year, maybe. Right. So that first day you find me, like much like other characters on the internet, all sorts, you're like, hey, is, wh where's, when's the shoe going to drop? When's he going to ask me for something? Like I, I get that email all the time, like waiting for the shoe to drop, waiting for the shoe to drop, but I don't need to. And that's what builds a real brand. And I think it's okay to go in for the ask. I think it's very okay if you want to sell something or do something. It, when I want to sell empathy, when I want to sell case with, I'm pumped with that. It's always okay. I think the longer you can hold off by not asking, the better. I see. Because I'm not really a big on like Patreon or anything. Like I want to still provide value with the ask. I agree. Bro, you know how empathy is a $45 wine? Yeah. I feel thrilled buying that for like for 20 bucks. Like if somebody buys a pair of K-Swiss, like, you know, like they're going to buy another pair of sneakers anyway. It's not like I'm making them spend something, right? Like, mm. and on the marketing stuff, it's free for life. So like, you know. I think that uh, I think you've got the right mindset, brother. Keep going, holding your breath, bringing the most value possibly you can to your audience without asking for their money is the greatest leverage point. If you can, if you can subsidize through flipping on eBay and YouTube ads for the rest of your life and never have to ask them for something, amazing. Or if you ask them for something, it's something high value like access, like a weekend with you you know, shooting in the, in the woods for a week. And it's an experience. It's $5,000 mm. a head. You can almost go super premium once you build a brand. So that's how I'm thinking. 
Yeah, I'm not um, getting any money on ads. I'm still patient with that. Anyway, it's early. So I, it's early. You don't have yeah. enough views yet. I'm so talking I picked, three, up a, four. I picked up a job to Love kind it. of, so I'm doing that like full time, almost 40 hours a week. I'm living at my parents. So I just finished Love. college. Where do you live? Uh, just like an hour outside of Toronto. Understood. Fantastic. So it's just about the patience now. I like the piece. You got, I like the, I like the ingredients. You got it. Are you doing TikTok? Yes, sir. How many a day? Don't lie. Cause we'll fucking look and we'll call you. <laughs> no, out. honestly, honestly, not I was it. doing a lot, but now I'm kind of, I, I hit one that got pretty big and then I got lazy. Cause I'm like, Oh no, wow, you got your nut off. Like you're like, Oh, you think you're somebody now? <laughs> <or> something? <laughs> not really. But and now I'm trying to put like one a day at least, but it's not pertaining to what I do on YouTube. So I'm trying to do mix it, pertain, those exactly. Pertain to what you're doing that you're passionate about. Okay. When you do four a day, you can do two that are pertaining to fucking camera life and you can do one to flip life and you can one, do one to having fucking epic hair. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> do you think I should do flip life stuff like on the photography channel too? Because I don't want to bombard people with like content that they I think don't you really should try about. it. I think you should try it. Mm. Because people are like, whoa, fuck, I love that too. You know, people like, you know, when I do garage selling, when I do marketing, when I do wine, like, are there a group of people like, I don't want to hear about wine. I'm here to get fucking tips to build my business. I'm like, sorry, dude. But like the next post is going to be fire. So, you know, like people are crippled by one piece of content. I'm not. I'm, I agree. I'm, I don't feel that way either. Cause I post a bunch of shit that I do on a regular basis. Like when I go, but you're staying in the I, same, but go oh, so good. So then you're yeah, there. So like I document yes, I do that. Think you I should do a, flim- yes. I do a bunch of shit and they obviously yes. don't do as well as the photo stuff, but I That's don't okay. really want to care about that. You shouldn't because what ends up happening is it's building a depth with a certain group of people with you. And that's great. So I would, uh, I think you're good, man. Keep it going. I appreciate you. Thanks man. Lots Stay of well, man. Talk to you appreciate soon. Appreciate it. Take care. All right. Big shout out actually, uh, before we go move on big, big, big shout out to Jack cat with two T's on Twitter. I didn't even have to remind him to, to share the uh, Ask Gary B show on Twitter. As a matter of fact, I just followed you, Jack, in Bristol, England, uh, and retweeted your share. Please take a screenshot of this right now and share it on your platforms. Let's get a ton of people uh, to watch today. I'm following on Twitter. Not enough for you tweeting me right now, so I need that. Oh, big shout out to Jack, J- Jace Dean as well, uh, Perla Rivera. I'm retweeting both of you. This is a uh, this is uh, I love this reach with Republic of. Obs- Sellers, I'm retweeting all of you. I want you guys to get tons of Twitter followers. And there she is. Maria, what is good? Hi, Gary. How are you? I'm really well. How are you? Good. Um, also from New Jersey. So what part? Tom's River right now. Love it. Yep. Um, Love it. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't even be here asking this question right now. Um, part of the wrestling community. I know you like wrestling too. Um, yes. I started a podcast with a friend and um, I love it more than I, I didn't know I was going to love it more than I could. Exactly. Um, more than my job, more than everything. I love it. Yeah. Um, I look forward to doing it all the time. My question to you is how do I, I have a decent following in the wrestling community on Twitter only. How do I get it out there to more people? More on Twitter or more just in the world? In general, like I don't know. First, first you put, use your Twitter to start building up your other platforms. You have to get on TikTok and Instagram yesterday heavy. TikTok too? I would argue that TikTok is your biggest opportunity. For people that don't have big audiences uh, in the macro, the biggest opportunity is to be a first mover in an emerging platform and TikTok is still emerging even at its enormous scale. Yeah. I mean, I think you should do two wrestling, uh, just like you're right now, like talk about wrestling, like, which is not, and then just like learn TikTok, go to TikTok today and spend an hour or two just consuming TikTok to get a mm-hmm. feel for the room and then start making the next day. Um, yeah. Two TikToks a day and then use Twitter because Twitter's amazing. You can tweet 30 times a day and get away with it. So use Twitter to build up your TikTok and your Instagram. I would probably put four to five tweets a day per platform. So that's 10 tweets a day 
pushing to your Instagram and your TikToks so you can siphon some of your audience there and then you just start building within those worlds. That's the way you migrate audience that gives you a little spark by like using, Twitter's the best platform to have most of your users because you can use it to push to the other places whereas on Instagram you can't post 15 times a day. Um, mm -hmm. You can use stories but you need to get very serious about those two platforms. It will work. Twitter and TikTok. On Twitter, uh, uh, Instagram and TikTok, using Twitter to build up there. On Twitter, are you okay. jumping? Are you jumping into random wrestling conversations and adding your two cents? Good. Yeah. All day long, more, 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 more. Like literally, just you know, search and Chris I Jericho, do, Big John Stud, Rey Mysterio, like yeah. CW, like just search and jump in, jump in, jump in. And I, I'll ask questions and I'll get a lot of responses. Which not is that. Great, not so. that. Asking questions no. is your community. I want you to, I want more people to discover you. So I want you to go on Twitter, right? And I'll show you actually, this is fun. Now that I have time. So I'm going to Twitter right now <laughs> and I'm literally going to type in ECW, right? Wrestling, mm -hmm. right? And when, when I type that, you know, some things come up. I hit, I like to hit latest at the top, latest. So you hit latest on ECW. And what you see is, you know, 34 minutes ago, somebody says in the last 24 hours, I've watched AEW Dynamite, the rise and fall of ECW clips from NXT and the wrestlers episode one. You know, this is the reason. And I can just reply. And I just replied. I literally am replying to this person right now. Lit. That right? you don't know, know at all. That I don't know it. Yeah. <laughs> Twitter, Twitter is the cocktail party of the internet. Well, here's my problem with Twitter. Because doing that. And, and I follow you for two years uh, and I shouldn't feel that way. And it takes a lot for me, but the amount of haters that you get when Fuck you do that. I Man. know. What it like, I what, know. It, 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 you know, haters are the reason people didn't like high school. Haters are the reason people don't like life. Like other people's opinions are dog shit. Fuck them. If somebody's not, not this is like old school, like, like old school grandma shit. If you jump into that conversation and they're like, let's go to the most extreme. Shut up, bitch. You just move on. What? You're worried that fucking Big John Stunt 49 called you a bitch? Who gives a fuck? He's a fucking loser if he would do that. I, I, feel bad I for him. Yeah. Don't feel bad for yourself. Feel bad for him. Maria, this is the number one fucking mental thing. Twitter is the cocktail party of the internet. You should be jumping into 50 to 500 wrestling conversations a day on Twitter because you're knowledgeable. And when somebody says something about Repo Man, you bring up something about demolition. Okay. That was, that was me showing my nerd wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> That's old school, but okay. Yeah, I am a little bit old school. Little, <laughs> but, but nonetheless, got it? Got it. Instagram, TikTok, I need to see four posts from you today on those two platforms, and I need to see you jumping into 50 conversations about AEW, about Triple H, about missing China, and missing about whatever the heck is on your mind. Jump, search, search in there and get in there. You know, search, you know, Brock okay. Lesnar, the name, and then people are talking, jump in there, right? Got it. Search Randy I'll Orton and jump in there and add your two cents. Search Gronkowski and add your two cents that you think he's a doof because he's a fucking patron. I fucking hate him. Oh, he, he's entertaining. And I'm, glad he's, I'm glad he's retired. But do you know what I mean? Add your two cents. And if yeah. somebody says you don't know anything or this and that, drop knowledge on them. You know? Awesome. Okay. Good luck, Marie. Thank, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, big shout out to my dad's business, Wine Text. Um, actually, Actually, team, I know you've been asking about lower thirds. Like, I don't mind putting wine text on here. It is exploding. Winetext.com. If you're not part of it and you buy wine, get on it. And plus now everybody's buying their wine on the internet. Winetext.com. Sign up. It would mean the world to me because it would support my dad. Sean, your hair looks good. Don't worry, bro. Let's rock and roll. <laughs> How you doing, man? Good, bro. Thank you so much for having me on, man. I really appreciate it. Happy to have you, brother. Where are you from? Man, I don't, I don't know if you remember, you sent me an email back in January. I sent you an email about like some stuff I had going on. You sent me like this whole thing and you said, uh, you're going to win. And I was like, that's been my whole motto for this year, man. So I really appreciate I do, it, man. I do remember, you know, it's funny, back to the joke I made to start the show. Uh, my buddy Aton's like, hey, you need to do more. And I'm like, bro, I do so many things behind the scenes. Me and Lou sending masks to hospitals all around the country. I'm one-on-one -on -one replying to people 
at midnight on my text, 212-931-5731. I want to remind everybody before, you know, that so many of us are doing so many things behind the scenes as well. So like rock and roll. So uh, like, just like that, back in January, just sending that. So I appreciate it. Go ahead, my friend. What can I help with? Um, So you talked about it yesterday. Obviously, I was watching yesterday. And if you weren't watching yesterday, you missed out. But um, just uh, so my question is like just further into like what can musicians do to be successful at this time? Like you talked about uh, doing the live streams and throwing up the link uh, to the Venmo and stuff like that. Um, But I guess some of the concern I've heard from like other artists and stuff is like the well's going to run dry after a certain amount of time. And like my argument is after watching you for four years that if you provide good content, like people are going to keep like the cream is going to rise to the top. That's true. So like, is there anything you feel like I can do to try to differ, differentiate myself, I guess, from being everything honest, else that's going on? Of course, being your honest self. I think the biggest differentiator is actually more authenticity and more transparency. There is only one Sean Mullen. Like, like your insecurities, sharing that with the audience, only you can do that, right? You know, like the way your voice sounds, only you can do that. The way you play it, only you can do that. I, I pretty much suck at everything besides being fully Gary Vaynerchuk. And, and that means I garage sale, which confuses people. And that means that I stay private with the things that I'm most proud of when I help and donate and things of that nature. And it means that I prefer to do one-on-ones like this instead of, you know, JVing with other famous people. Like you can, I'm just best at being, and that means I'm willing to talk about sports cards and I'm willing to hustle 15 hours a day. And I'm willing to, and I'm willing to talk about the Jets and 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 hate Patriot fans, 100%, no matter what. Um, Making and, that guy take the helmet down yesterday. That's right, and love my family <laughs> and and support Vayner Sports and AJ. And like like I'm me, and I think the biggest thing that people I'm me in a world where I watch people trying to be somebody, anybody besides themselves. I'm right. gonna be like, oh, I love what that person did. I'm gonna be more like them, or I need to be do more what. I don't fucking want to do what anybody's doing. I don't give a fuck about them. So just shoot all that out. You, you know how to break out? You know how to be different? By being different. Everybody else is trying to be like somebody else. I'm trying to be Gary fucking Vaynerchuk. Got it. That's it. Man, it's just, dude, yeah, it's, it's overwhelming, man. Like, I, just watching you for four years and like, man, I've, I've gone through some tough stuff, man. And like, you know, it's just like all the different quotes that you have. And like, I've posted stuff up in the room, like different quotes that you have just to like, to motivate me to keep going. Like when I have a bad day, especially now after getting that email, like the first thing you said is you're going to win. And like every time like things get a little bit down, I'm like, I'm going to win, man. Gary said, I'm going to win. I'm going to get this. (laughs) And so I got to keep driving, you know, you're, you're, yes, I do know. And you're so young, dude. How old are you? I'm 33. Fixing me 34. Fucking, if you actually under, bro, do you know at 34 is when I left to start Vayner Media? I know, man. I think about that a lot. I'm like, man, this could be the time, you know? And by the way, and maybe for you, the time is 46. And guess what? You'll still have 50 fucking more years to live after 46. We need to change this ageism mindset. We do not have a good relationship with time in the world. Everyone thinks it's all running out. 33 is a fucking baby. I, I texted a bunch of people on my text platform last night that were like 68 to 72. And I just sent them a message of like, we got 30 more years of fucking damage. And it was funny, the replies they sent me. And like, but they get it. Like, do you know what a 68 year old thinks about how young you are? They're like, motherfucker, I got shoes older than this fucker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I look so, back at ages I've been before and I'm like, man, if I realized how much time I had then, I'm like, well, I'm probably going to think that later about this time. So I should just go ahead and execute right. now. I love where your mind is, man. Keep pushing, brother. I love you. I love Be you, too, you. Man. Make the content about you, your truth. Those, four, those hard times, get that poison out of your body because a lot of people will associate with you on that. I appreciate it'll be, that, man. It'll be therapeutic for you, and it will make a connection point with others. There's only one you, bro. That's the only way to break through. I appreciate it, man. Thank you Talk so you much. Soon. You're welcome so much. Everybody's watching. Uh, hope... Uh, Awesome. Hold on. Sorry, getting some of this. Getting some business stuff. I'm I'm ready, Dustin. 
Let's see who's sharing. There we go. I see some sharing. All right, Adam, chime. Preston Alexander, you're getting shared. Let's go. Put screenshots and links to. There we go. Alex A. Good for you. I like that. Stephen Stanwood, I agree. That's a good quote. Matthew H., what's good, bro? Gary, how you doing, my man? I'm, go I'm doing well. Let's cook Thank it. you so much for uh, taking the time doing this. I feel inspired and grateful for this, for sure. Happy um, to do it. Thank you. Um, so I'm, I'm an ele elementary education major at the University of Iowa. And uh, okay. at the December of 2018, I started my podcast called Be Kind, Be Positive, Be Yourself, just because 2018 was like the first time I experienced like hard anxiety and fall and depression. And I, I wanted to start Why? something. Uh, br break up with the girl. I thought mm -hmm. it was so, uh, and I had never, I had to figure myself out mm -hmm. and everything. And I wanted, yep. it was more therapeutic to start my podcast for myself. Good um, for you. Fast forward to now. And uh, we built a community and a lot of people and a lot of connections I never thought I would have. And, uh, you know, you take all the time and, and I, I look at you as a role model because you use your platform, empathy, optimism, positivity as making it cool, right? And you lead, you lead with it. And I really respect you for that. And that's what I'm trying to do. So my question is people that are in a pessimistic route or kind of down on the times, right? How do I encourage them and lead them with positivity without coming off as rude or overbearing or anything? Just, yeah. And, and, and this is an aggressive motion. So I'll, I'll give it to you a different way. Like, okay. Or, Bro, it's just consistency in per, per, consistent conversation in perpetuity. Mm. Bro, I've been doing this for a minute and I'm going to do it when I'm 107 and it's going to be consistent and people are going to leave comments in whatever form comments are in 25 years saying you say the same shit and I'm going to say proud of it, dick. Proud <laughs> of it, dick. Do you understand? How yeah. do you do it? By you staying consistent, by you having perspective. And then how do you do it? I find different ways to keep saying the same thing. Got it? Yeah. New adjectives. My vocab has expanded dramatically over the last decade. Uh, different analogies. I'm great at analogies. My mom's dad was supposedly great at analogies. She always tells me I picked that up from him. I crush analogies. You know I love that shit. Uh, mm -hmm. Being fully myself. When I broke out in 2009, most of the world in the comments on LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, Instagram and on Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, and definitely email, and definitely my friends and my inner circle of business associates. Almost everybody told me to stop cursing; that I would never get big if I cursed. I remember 2000, that. Yeah, two thousand nine. This is way before you do two thousand eight, seven, six. Like early me, two thousand nine. Like it was just, or maybe you were there. Nonetheless, I apologize, but like you know, it just like like you know, like way back then in oh nine the culture was a little bit different and cursing was a little bit more like, uh, but that's just the way I talk. My mom fucking curses. That's who I picked mm -hmm. it up from. I know you're watching mom take that, you know, like, but she's cursed in Russian. So it, it took me a while to realize she was actually cursing, but you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Jersey outside in the woods, kind of like Jersey kid. And like, that's, that's how we talk. And so I was authentically me. I've stayed consistent and I'll always be consistent. That's how you do it, Matthew. And do you think just, and I, I've always tried to tell my, my podcast people, like, I'm going to be transparent. I've shared the bad times as, as well in the past year and a half. And yep. I think that I kind of thought to myself kind of what you're saying, if I'm, if I'm right, is that if I be myself, maybe they'll come around after so much. If I just be consistent, it might be like, oh, maybe I should try this positivity thing. Is that kind of... Matt, do you, Matt, do you understand that some people have followed me literally for six years every day and today's the day they fucking finally take mm. my advice bro you that's exact the reason you have to be consistent is you never know when today's the day that they're ready and you say it the way that they're ready for people are like people ask me all the time too like hey gary do you ever get tired of like you know like you know people not listening i'm like no it's not about me i need to just be consistent say it different ways challenge myself creatively so that if today's the day and I say it the right way, boom. Like, I didn't know coronavirus was gonna come that was gonna give me an opportunity to do a two hour morning show every day. Mm. Like, somebody's gonna get affected from yesterday 
Somebody's gonna sell a ton of shit in their house that's gonna buy them those two extra months that are gonna change the course of their life because of Sell Stuff Saturday. This Saturday, Sell Stuff, sell stuff Saturday, look for the hashtag. Um, you know, I didn't know that that was gonna be day. I came up with it on the spot as you probably saw if you watched yesterday. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. like, you know, so no bro, it's about, it's about staying consistent and knowing today might be the day that Karen in Illinois was ready to hear it finally. Yes, that's because what listen, I the shit I talk, bro, the shit I talk about, people don't want to do. Be patient for 15 years. Save money. Yeah. Don't buy dumb shit. Like people are gonna try. A lot of young people are gonna try every other version before yeah. they come back to me. They like me because I'm entertaining and come across cool to them, but they actually don't want to do my shit. Do you know how many hypocritical Gary V fans there are who love yeah. me but do nothing that I talk about? Yeah, yeah. that's what I needed. Thank you. Got you. Take Thank care, you, Gary. You yep. too. Let's go, Dustin. Let's keep this going. This is fun. By the way, I'm really enjoying everybody who's taking screenshots of this and posting it on Twitter. Um, and uh, and I'm retweeting their accounts. Corey Waters, you're in. And I'm going to start following some of you fuckers. Boom, Carrie, Corey Waters, you've just been followed. Corey, I see that you're in New Jersey. I'm going to ask you right now. Are you signed up for winetext.com? Question mark. Let's see what Corey responds with. I like this. I like you sharing. There we go, Matt Smith. Boom. Boom. Hi, Jenna. Hey, how are you? I'm well. How are you? Good, thank you. Thanks for doing this. I'm super grateful to be on and super excited. Great. Where are you from? From Long Island, New York. So not far. Yeah. Um so I've had a side hustle for two years now. It's a clothing brand. I basically market to people who are underpaid. It's actually the name of the brand. Mm. And um, even before, brand. thank you. Even before all this has Because by the way, I apologize for interrupting you. Why that's such a brilliant brand name. Everybody thinks they're underpaid. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I came up with it. But lately I've been thinking about like, did I pick the right niche? Like I'm uh sales have just not been good and i've been uh slowly losing passion for it like I've are you been in- are you losing so listen let's talk about passion real quick what do you have a sense if your passion is money comma that's a b the the process of making money is it a money actual money is it b the process of making money or is it c having a fashion brand and being creative, which one is your passion? And by the way, Jenna, this is an important moment. Like all all three are acceptable. There's nothing wrong with any of them. I'm just curious because it's going to help me help you. It's definitely C. Like I want to, well, then money. Then, then, then then you're losing passion because you're not getting results. Like you're in the best spot because good news, like you picked C. So if it's doing shitty right now, you know, and it's a side hustle. So it's not like, you know, obviously you'd love it to be your permanent job. This now gets into, we need to think about the tactics of you building a brand and doing sales, not about the whole damn thing. So that's a good start. Yeah, I did. But um, I, I'm also multi-passionate. Like I have a lot of things that I want to do and sometimes it's hard to pick like what I want to do. And, um, well, you can, you can do like, the fast, you can do underpaid 85% of the time and 15% of the time do all the other random shit because you're creative and you're that kind of character. And I find that doing the 15% of other shit, Empathy, Vayner Sports, uh, Gary V, baseball cards actually makes me go 110% on the 85% in running Vayner Media because I'm also creative. Yes, yeah, that's the thing. Like, I'm self aware enough to know that, like, I don't want to, that, like, whatever that side hustle is, like, I want to go all in on that thing. And lately I've been thinking about like, do I want to, like I've been drawing my whole life. So I've been considering like doing something with that. Um, well, let's stop for a second. Going let's stop like for a second. more of like the artist route. And, let's let's yeah. stop for a second. The answer is yes. Draw something, post it on Instagram, 
film yourself drawing it, post it on TikTok. Like people yeah. have the world confused. The answer is yes to everything. Like, yes, go that route. Like everybody thinks it's like a thing. Oh, I'm gonna make the pivot now from fashion brand and designer to draw. Like they think it's like a thing. Everybody thinks it's like school and life. Like I go to school, then I go to college, then I, then I get a job. Like, it's not that, it's fucking flexible. This is a flexible world. The answer is yes, Jenna. Draw some shit right now and put it on the internet. <laughs> I know it's like that simple, but it's just you know, like. It's that simple. There is no, it's just like, I'm going to pound this into your head. Let's stick here. The answer is yes. I am a wine guy. I am an entrepreneur. I am a garage sailor. I am a motivational speaker to some, though I, I like to consider it practical optimism. I am, I am, I am, I am. The answer is yes. I'm a baseball card dealer. I'm like, like, yeah, I'm a podcaster. The answer is yes. Everybody is a Renaissance woman and man now. You don't like. It's not so structured. It is that simple. Draw I, something, post it. I just feel like when I take on too much, I'm spreading myself too thin, and then I just end up becoming like mediocre at a bunch of things instead that's of an like becoming an expert in one thing no no that's an ideology that people use because they overjudge themselves yeah it makes sense don't but, judge yourself um, like you you've got like i want to break you out of this it's life it's about perspective all this is all of this is about half glass full half glass empty yes i was talking to my dad about an idea for wine library around wine text. And when I was done telling him about it, he went right into the things that could go wrong. And I spent the first 18 minutes of 18 minutes. I spent the first four and a half minutes explaining it to him on everything that was going to go right. That's just two men with two different perspectives. Yeah. I mean, like as far as the brand though, like you talk about like staying in your lane and only talking about like what you're an expert in. Like I want to give people value, but hold on. Like I want to help people. I don't, I, did, I, I, I don't say about, you know, it's funny. This is why it's so fun to have some time to like break down. I don't talk, I don't say stay in your lane of what you're an expert in. I say stay in your lane. If you're passionate about drawing, that's your fucking lane, Jenna. No, I know that. But like, as far as like my clothing brand, like the reason I've been losing passion as well is because like, I put out content, like I have a YouTube channel and like I talk about like being underpaid. I talk about my story, but I feel like there's only so much I can, only so much I can talk about my story. Like I want to help people who are so underpaid, how but many, like I'm not how many, a career how many, coach, like I'm not a finance expert. You know what you are? You're a human. You're a friend. I don't think, I don't know, I don't, what am I? I'm a human being. You're a human. Yeah. You could you could be doing what I'm doing right now. How many people have bought something? You have a Shopify? Is like you control the direct to consumer? Yeah, it's a Shopify store. How many people have bought clothes? Roughly. I fulfilled over two hundred orders in uh less than two years. Good for you. But Ready? sales have just like stopped. I got it. That's not a lot, and I get it. Yeah. You should email you should email all two hundred of them and ask them if they'd like to go on FaceTime with you or live and talk about the whole concept or what they liked about it. Literally email them. What's going to happen? They're going to email you and say, unsubscribe, fuck you. Like you can do it. What I'm saying is whether you do that or not, you can do anything. Everything can be done. You want to help people. You want to talk to people. You can, you don't need to be a certified psychologist. Don't say you're a certified psychologist. Don't lie. Tell the truth and do. You're a friend that wants to talk. You're a human being that wants to talk about this subject. It is your, I don't think I'm an expert in business. I don't, I think I'm a human being who has ideas, hypotheses, and opinions. Ideas, hypotheses, and opinions, if I can, and passion. I'm IHOP. I'm just IHOP. I have ideas, <laughs> hypotheses, opinions, and passion. I'm the new fucking IHOP. Do you understand? That's who I think I yeah. am. And I think you need to think of it that way too. Yeah, I mean, I could do that. Um, I was actually thinking about starting a podcast and doing that, like talking to people who are underpaid so they could share their story. Jenna, can I give you um, a huge piece of advice? Yeah. Do you have a Twitter account? 
Yes. Were you listening to the wrestling woman that I told her to jump into conversations? Uh, yeah. 20 minutes ago on T. 20 minutes ago on the show. Did you see that interaction with the woman from Jersey who's, who does wrestling? It's okay if you didn't. I'm just curious if you did. Yeah, I wasn't fully paying attention no to worries. that conversation. I get it. But I get yeah. it. So let me tell you where I'm at. I need you to go into Twitter, search the term underpaid, and jump into a conversation with every single person. Read what they wrote and then say, yeah, girl. Or like, hey, have you thought about this? Or this is something that's been... I want to remind everybody, I, Gary V, was built on Twitter by listening to people talking, by searching on Twitter. Do you know how to search terms on Twitter? Yes. I want you to search underpaid. Mm -hmm. And I want you to jump into every conversation around people talking about underpaid for, for two hours today and then get back to me and tell me what happened. I tried that a little bit. I don't give a like, shit. I think I tried it once. I don't give and, a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I, tried a, I tried selling a ton of shit once and twice and third, and it didn't work. I tried to invent a deal of the day site for my dad for a decade, and I finally figured it out with wine text. I don't give a shit. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, Jenny, that's crazy. I have been listening. I have been listening to what you've been saying with like sending DMs. I've been sending DMs to like some of my favorite rappers. A couple of them I sent out a shirt to. So, I and that's that. something that like I was fearing doing for so long. It's so crazy, like how you can you're, fear something and then you're, fe- you're fearing a lot of things. I've spent seven minutes with you. You're in no and fear culture, and like even the framework of if I don't focus on one thing, it won't work well is actually just the manifestation of fear and insecurity. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. That's Jenna, true. listen to me. Listen to me. Life is good. You could do this. You're a creative woman. Like, let's go fucking do this. Just fucking one year, close your ears. Do me a favor. Do old Gary V a favor. For one year, just close your ears. Don't hear anything. All the negative feedback, all the pushback, all the bad sales results. Just make, 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 make. I don't want to hear from any of you anymore. Like I've been thinking about doing a podcast. Fucking do a podcast. I don't want to hear from anybody anymore saying, yeah, I I heard you talking about TikTok. I've been debating it. Fuck debating. Fuck thinking. Fuck pondering. Fucking make. Go. Make. Yeah, yeah, I need to get into that, the mental hurdles of everything, just doing and- uh, It's called this. It's called stop listening to other fucking people. Your mom, your dad, your uncle, your brother, your sister, anonymous pants 47, like everybody, stop listening to them. Yeah, that's true. Like I've been, I've been thinking about like, uh, like, did I lose the passion because the sales stopped, or did I lose the passion because like, I want to do every other things? But I mean, do, I guess it's, do do ready for this. I believe that if you do all these other things, twenty percent of the time, you're gonna find your passion back to the brand, or stumble on yeah, the thing, sense. stumble on the thing that you actually were meant to be, which is a drawer. Yeah, like that's my passion. Like that's Can what you do I want to do. do. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm actually giving you tactical subs- a prescription. A tactical prescription. I want you to reply to 50 people on Twitter. 50 today. That's it. that would take me an hour. It might take you five hours because you're out of practice or you've only done it one time. I need you to spend. I want you to reply to 50 people who have put in the word you know underpaid. Then, and I'm not kidding. You have an Instagram. Yes. I'm going to say something very weird and I want you to do it. I want you to draw something, post it on Instagram and literally say, sorry guys, but Gary V made me do this because that's going to be the shield that will let you do this. I'm selling this drawing for 80 bucks. See what happens. <laughs> okay. I mean it, Jenna. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Update me on what happened. Okay. Going back to my phone, to Twitter. I got to retweet some more people doing screen time. <laughs> health, health pageant. You like that? I'm um, <laughs> That was fucking funny. <laughs> Let's do that. Um, wine wood PR. I love that. Let's show that. There we go. Iris Ross. I'm showing you. And Nicole. Uh, hi. Yeah, you. What's good? What's good, bro? Nico. Nicole. That's without any. Nicole. Yeah. I love it. Good to see you. How are you today? So well. 
I'm so super pumped to talk to you. First Thank off, you. I just want to say I'm super grateful um, for you in my life because like I've been grinding through your content eight months through. I knew you from before. It was just that these eight months have like transformed me, and I like got super pumped, and I'm so so grateful. So thank, thank you. you for that for the bottom of. Where are you from? I'm from India, but I'm starting here in Canada. Um, and well, university is just sort of a backup. Um, so to come to my point, so I have like two questions. One, I, uh, I'm, I want to be a musician, so I'm really passionate about music. So I obviously heard you talking about TikTok and I started a TikTok account. I've, I have over 200 videos at this point, but, it. but it's not working out for me in terms of like the audience watching because I'm still like at 35 followers at this point. So I'm trying because to figure you're, out you're, what- you're not, you're not good at it right now. Right. Which is good. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. fine. But yeah. what you need to learn from this point, you can't have 200 videos and have 35 followers. You needed to realize somewhere along the line that you have to do something completely different because nobody likes what the fuck you're doing. Right. And right. that's okay. Yeah. You know, you know my, my mindset. I think it's fucking awesome that you have 200 videos and only 35 followers. Like you yeah. might be the worst TikToker in the world. And I think that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. what I would do right now, Nicole, is I would your next five TikToks, you have to do something completely uncomfortable, completely different, completely, the, if you don't dance, you do a ridiculous bad dance with yeah. one of the trending dances. You look at the trending hashtags and you come up with something. Instead of doing what you, what have you been mainly putting up there? Um, all like singing videos. So like the, the other day there was this guy, I'm pretty sure you watched him. So it's about, uh, I'm bored in the house, I'm in the house bored. So I took the song and I made a melody for it and then I posted it on TikTok. And I like that. Yeah. And then cool. like one person commented and she was like, oh, this should be more popular. But again, like it got a bit of traction and then it was like dead. Can I give you a huge, okay, I'm going to give you a recipe. Today, today, uh, I want you to go to TikTok and I want you to leave a comment on 100, 100 different posts. Got it? Yeah. Watch, watch it and write a reply. I believe that three of your replies could go, viral and that that will double your audience in one day hit me up on twitter tomorrow and tell me what happened sure will do okay number two second question um, and my second question was so i obviously got i watched since i watched a lot of your content i got into like flipping and sports cards and stuff like that and honestly i'm like a guy who loves trying out stuff and like seeing Clearly. if it works for me um and like in so it's been like three months since i started flipping and stuff like that I've been flipping stuff. I'm like, I, I'm doing with sports cards and it's been pretty good, but I feel like I'm just confused whether like that's my thing. Cause a lot of my time goes into like doing that. Cause you're sourcing stuff and then coming back yep. home. And, and yep. since I'm like an international student, I don't have like a car or anything. So I'm obviously commuting mm. my bus and stuff like that. Mm. Um, mm. And I'm still new to the city itself. What about buying stuff on the internet, having it shipped to you and then reflipping it so that you don't, so you can maximize your arbitrage of time. Um, like you mean like sourcing from Alibaba and stuff like that? Yeah, or sourcing from just sourcing from the internet. I mean, I buy cards on eBay, have them delivered, and then repost them on eBay because yeah. I was right that the player was going to be better than when I bought him. Yeah, I mean, I started doing that, but like my question was that I don't know if like I enjoy it as much as like I do with. I can tell you right now, I already know that you don't. Right. I can just like you should not be flipping. I'm glad you gave it, a, you know, you're crushing it. You know how I talk about tasting things? You're very good at it. It comes natural to you. News yeah. alert, just like 200 videos, I only get 35 followers. You need to change it up yeah. three months and the level, your, your voice went down when you started talking. You don't like it as much. Right. And remember when I talked about fuck Gary Vee, fuck anybody else, be you. It's yeah. clearly not for you but I'm pumped that you tried it because it might've been the life changer. We now to need to move on to the next thing. I mean, honestly, I was coming in from- Or, or, yeah. or maybe you need to flip something else. Maybe flipping sports cards, not fun, but going to thrift stores and flipping fashion is fun. Or maybe going to Alibaba and buying, you know, a white mug for three bucks and then selling it for 11 bucks on, on Etsy is exciting for you. So maybe it's what you're flipping. Right. 
Sure. I mean, I honestly got into flipping and then I started looking at it from a money angle because I'm obviously like an international student. Of course. Right? And, yeah. um, you know, and like my parents yeah. are paying for my tuition and I owe awesome. it to them to obviously mm. give it back. Right. Yes. And then, but in the process, like you always talk about pursuing happiness and passion and that's going to lead you to earn more money. Right. And like not, adding value, not, not, adding not, so, not necessarily more money, happier money. Right. Yeah. Sorry. You know, to me, $112,000 a year take home selling glasses, because that was what it ended up being, is much better than $400,000 being an engineer, because that's what your grandma wanted you to do. 100%. Yeah. I, be- I believe that. I don't know yeah. what else to say. I'm, I mean, I've lived like, I'm old at this point. It's very obvious to me. Like, it, it's just very obvious. It's fucking black and white. Yeah. And every fucking person that tells me, like, fuck you, like, I'd rather have 400, like, I'm like, just because you don't know, because you don't, because <laughs> you don't have four hundred thousand dollars. That's what you think, motherfucker. True, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. It's the process. Of so everything. not more, not more. You know, and, okay. and 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 that's an important part. And this, I'm using tea with Gary Vee to create more clarification, because when people hear more, when they don't make more after four years, they're like, ah, oh, fucking Gary. I'm like, but do you love selling fucking pumpkins? They're like, yeah, I do. I'm like, you won. Yeah. Right. So yeah, I just got confused within that because like I'm like trying to help my parents, right? In the process of like real quick, Nicole, you have your whole life to pay your parents back. Yeah. You're not in the position right now to really crush it. Do you understand? Yeah. Patience, my man. Yeah. Gotcha. Cool. All I'm right. gonna run. Talk to you soon, man. All right. Thanks, man. Thank you. All right, back to Twitter. Um by the way. Uh, here's something. I will follow every person that tells me that they just signed up for Wine Text um, on Twitter. If you sign up to winetext.com right now, not every state can be shipped to, but if you do uh, and you tweet me right now and you say, just sign, I can read, just sign up for Wine Text and show me the confirmation screen. So shoot that because I'm not fucking trusting you. I will follow you on Twitter. Hello. Hi. What's your name? Milonka. Milunka, how are you? Pretty good, thank you. How are you? I'm well. What's going on? Well, my family uh, and I run a restaurant, and it's been in our family for 63 years. And I actually am passionate with with the business and I'm really deeply connected to it. And our brand is who we are, which is that we love people, we love serving. Um, My family came from Yugoslavia, and really, America's been so good to us. So now coronavirus is here, and we're doing carry out and we we're known for being um old school and so i've been using technology instagram facebook um i'm not that old but it it hasn't come that naturally to me but i have started to do more of it with with sort of your promptings and advice and i want to know in these let's say 18 months door to door the coronavirus sort of keeps us here what can i do to learn from from this help my business do things that i wouldn't normally do because i wouldn't have the time because we're so hands-on and sort of not feel it. intimidated by it are you is there any way that we can film whoever it is whether it's you whether it's another family member whether it's a chef is there any way that we can film the making of every dish you sell from home or one person goes to the restaurant. Is there any way we can do that? Well, what's interesting is we're known for all of our recipes being family secret. So the only way- Oh, that that's you, cool. That's so the only way. Mm. So the only way that you can get a recipe is by uh, providing a male heir to our throne. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise we sort of don't share. Oh, that's amazing. I <laughs> love that. I, I, so listen, people buy from people. So where I was going with the recipe, and now maybe we go a different route, how many family members are in the business? So my mother, my brother, and I are there every day, but my, I have two sisters, and we're always there. I mean, we grew up above it. the restaurant. It's I our home. It, it really I, is our home. I'll tell you the number one thing that I would do. I would try to put out on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, all of them. You have to sign up for all of them, and I know you get it, and you're on two of them now, and I get it's not natural. I believe in this so much. I think you need to do story time. I mean, your mom probably has fucking some real crazy shit. You guys have a ton of crazy shit because you're 
like living above the restaurant. I think you need to put out 100 videos of different stories about the restaurant and post them locally. I genuinely believe that it will lead to an increase in takeout during now and it will be build even more brand. Do you know how much good business things and good life things happened to me because people know I was born in Belarus, because they know I sold lemonade as a kid, because they know I sold baseball cards? Stories, the Bible, uh, movies, it's all about stories. And I think while we're all confined right now, everybody needs to go into hardcore story time. You have a real blessing. You guys have real fucking stories. I literally think you take a fucking phone. First of all, you'll be happy that you recorded your mom telling 25 stories one day anyway. Do you know what I mean? I think it's story time for you. Okay. I mean it, 100 stories from the five of you, from the six of you, um, and post it on every platform. And you'll learn how to post it differently on TikTok than on YouTube. Like, this is your time to learn. It is. Don't mind learning. I, and, and good news, you know what doesn't come natural to me? Working from home. And here I am on the fourth day, and I'm fucking liking it. Are you really? Yeah, I'm shocked. So maybe you'll really like making TikToks. You just don't know until you do it. Story time. Please do me a huge favor. Today's been a big day on T with Gary Vee about action. Please record two stories today. I will. I, I love have time. <laughs> I love it. Talk to you soon. Thank Get everybody you. involved. It's one of those stories from your mom will go viral. I'm telling you right now it will. Yeah, her screaming at me, maybe. <laughs> Even better. Talk to you soon. Thanks. Let's keep this going. All right, let's see. I made a premise, so I have to just signed up for one text. All right, Tim Beam. Um, let's see what's going on here. There we go. I've been signed up, Carrie. That's true, Peter. I should follow you for that since you've been signed up. And Tanner's in the building. Tanner, what's good, bro? I'm doing well. How are you, Gary? I am doing really well, man. Like, I really, I really feel like there's something here with this format. I totally agree. I've watched every day, and uh, it's definitely your biggest a, lot, a lot of value. Yeah. What's your biggest observation so far? Um, honestly, you know, with your Ask Gary V shows like that, you know, it feels a little similar to that, but you're going even deeper. Um, it, it doesn't feel as rushed. So I think. Yeah, because I'm not rushed. Right. As much. To your point. Yeah, 100%. I think that's right. And it's able, yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate it. Anyway, what's up, my friend? Yeah. Um, so I'll get right to it. Um, so I grew up, um, you know, just telling my truth. I grew up very well off. Um, my dad came from very little. Uh, he worked on the family farm and, um, and then he started his own client service business was very successful. And, um, you know, so I grew up very comfortable. My mom parented me, you know, perfectly. Um, as you say a lot, you know, I agree, you know, with, with my, how I was parented. Um, but he, um, unfortunately suddenly passed away at 45. Um, and I was 17 at the time. I was I'm 17. So sorry. I'm so sorry. Dave. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, but basically, from that moment forward, um, I kind of went into a cocoon, just yeah. went full insular um, in, into my head. And I really didn't come out till after college. Um, and so fast forward to like how this is relevant, kind of what my question is. Um, I've been a freelance web designer and developer for about five years now. Okay. And the problem is I, I fully believe that I self-sabotage myself. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think it's connected to what had happened. Um, you know, my How dad you self -sabotage? and I had... because I actually think you're about to hear a bomb. I think I self -sab sabotage myself too. Like I limit my financial upside. Cause I think for me, I think I just love the game so much and I almost don't want to get there. Like I'm, I'm like, yeah. I'm like inappropriately lo in love with the story and the process and like, you know, kind of want to pull it out in the 12th round, you know, like if right. I can buy the jets the way I want, it's almost like the jets announced in three years, they're going to sell it. I'm nowhere close. And then I fucking, you know, make it happen. Why do you think when you say you self-sabotage, Hey, what do you mean? And why do you think you do it? Well, yeah. So like how I do it is basically through undercharging. Um, okay. Like drastically. Okay. And 
I don't know, you know, when I went into um, dealing with everything, I really became 100% self-reliant. And, um, you know, but I, I turned something into, I turned that terrible negative situation into a positive. Um, you know, I started weightlifting, you know, I got mentally very, very strong. Um, and it's funny, my friend know, Harmon like, Skernick, my friend Harmon Skernick shook me in 2001. We went to Italy on a wine trip for business and one late night in Italy, like 2 a.m., he looked at me because he knows how close I am to my dad. And he, they were, he was talking about, I'm trying to remember the story properly. I think his dad had passed recently. And he said, you don't really become a man until your dad passes. And I can't believe, I mean, it's 20 years later, I'm bringing up that one sentence. Um, I think about it a lot. I very much think of myself as a man, but I do think about it. I'm very grateful. And I'd like to only become a man when I'm 100 because that means my dad would be 120. But I... I understand what you're saying about that, especially somebody who had an incredibly great gifted situation. So, yeah. you know, that level of uh, that comfort, that person that was taking care of shit gets, goes away um, and you kind of go inside yourself. So, but I still don't fully understand why the undercharging is connected to self-reliance or things of that nature. I, I actually think some people are just naturally scared to ask for more money. Like just literally, and the way to actually break that is to literally no different, like kissing a girl, riding a bike, having sex for the first time, swimming. It's literally just the action of asking. And in today's digital world where you can just email them potentially and text them like, hey, I'm 350 an hour instead of 175. I actually think this is a very easy, I've, I've helped a lot of people break this ceiling. I just force them. Even one of my friends, literally typed it asking for a hundred dollars more an hour and it worked then it kind of changed his trajectory something for you to right. consider yeah i mean i definitely think fear is definitely a part of that but more so i would say um you know i like things that are hard i don't like it when it's easy and i also um i, I don't feel like i'm not materialistic whatsoever i kind of went in the complete opposite direction after all that and she's like, what is I all this shit? Myself, fucking all this shit doesn't mean shit, right? You know, like I, I get it. I tell myself I don't need the extra money. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so let's talk about something that. else. Are we okay with that? Because I'm okay with self sabotaging myself. Yeah, I probably do it to a point where I, you know, have trouble paying bills. Well, that's so a it might be a little too yeah, much. Yeah, that's a problem. problem. Yeah. So good news. Yeah. Here we are. Rewatch this over and over. We're, you know, this will be posted. You will. Dustin, let's chop this and email it to Tanner. Ready? I'm yep, just I got you. Tan okay, ready? Tanner, what's up? It's Gary D. Charge more money this time. Cool. That's going to be a little clip. Save it on your phone and just literally ask for more money every time. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what to say, bro. It's, it's actually that simple. Yeah. Yeah, and I got to tell myself, I, like, you know, you can try it. And if you think it's going to be so terrible, then we'll see how you feel. 100%. But you got to do it. So... I don't know. When you had that call with that kid the other day, um, you know, it was in the electrician business. Um, mm. That really, really, if he's watching this, cherish those moments, man, because, you know, you may not have them forever. That, you know? that was one of the few moments in the last 15 years of being on the internet that I actually almost cried. Yeah. That was, that was a big one. I agree. Anyway, and I really wish you well, brother. Honestly, like, it's a, it's, this is an easy one, man. Honestly, it's an easy one. It's a hard one, right? It's like, it's, mm -hmm. it's like, it's like anything again, swimming was, I was scared shitless kissing girls scared. Like, like it, but it is easy. It was just jumping into the water. It was just kissing the girl. And I think you just need to charge more money. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for everything. Talk to you soon. Take care. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. See who else is signed up. Alejandro. Hey, what's going on, Gary? Life is good, bro. What's going on? What can I answer for you? Um, so my question, not to give too much backstory or anything like that, but um, it's just more of like, so I'm starting to stream a lot more because I found like, obviously I have a passion for video games, right? That's what I grew up doing. So I love doing a lot. And, um, but not so much more lately because I've been, uh, consuming a lot of your content. So okay. I've been doing other things outside of my life to 
you know, uplift myself, become more positive, be a harder and better worker. But um, what I wanted to know is, is how do you, or what's your viewpoint on providing free content with value when other people in the same area, like let's say play the same video game as me, are providing that same kind of content, but in more depth, or they're able to provide a little more value for free? Uh, you can only do what you can do. Just learn and dive in deeper? Yeah, if like Booga's better at it than you, like what are you going to do about it? Like, like, like Work harder. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, maybe it's more about, you know, maybe he might be better at showing the skill set, but you might be more entertaining or you might be more vulnerable and talk about shit or you might talk about goatee culture in a way that he can't, you know, like this is about yeah. making it about you. Like, look, there's people, there's probably nothing I talk about that there isn't somebody who talks about that specific thing, quote unquote, better. But but, oh, the cat is in the mix. Yeah, What's the cat's the cat name? Uh, Z. Z? She was sitting on my lap. Yeah. I love it. Z woke up because Z, girl or boy? Alejandro? I think we lost you for a second. I hope Z didn't like hit the line. Alejandro? Yeah. Girl, got it. So, you know, Z knows the good stuff's coming right now. So, like, honestly, it's just about being you. Ooh. You know, like, you're, you're getting caught up that somebody's better Jerry. at it. The, yeah, can you hear me? All right, Dustin, take him off, unfortunately, but I'll give the answer. Oh, I, think I lost anyway. Gary. Dustin, let, we can move on, Dust. Alejandro, I'm sorry, but here's okay, the answer. Hello, hello. Um, oh, that's someone. Hold on a second. <laughs> no worries. Um, Alejandro, I'll finish my answer to you, and then we're going to get somebody else on here. Uh, somebody else being better at something will always be the case in every situation in perpetuity. There are very few people that are literally actually the best in the world at something. And so, oh, there you are. So then getting, you know, getting into, you will never be the best in the world in anything. So getting comfortable with that and still doing it because you can still be the 17th best or the 17,000th best, but it's free. So, you, you know, like you're, you're in a great spot. Don't like, honestly, dude, you're doing what everybody else does. Everybody else is just watching everybody else. Like I, I, I'm bro. When I tell you that I don't know anything that might the agencies that compete with Vayner, the other business gurus, I know people are always like, Oh, you know, Rick Thompson. You're like, I'm like, I don't know. Rick. Tom I mean, I've heard the name of course, Yeah. but like, I don't know what anybody's fucking doing. That's what makes me happy. <laughs> All right, let's move mm -hmm. dust because he's chopping. Let's move it. Um, <laughs> you know, great hearing something like that from you. Thank you, brother. Dust, let's move it. He's chopping. I got you. So this next person is Elijah Kim. I think you talked to him yesterday. The uh, guitarist for Roddy Rich. Ha <laughs> ha, Elijah. What's good? Yeah, what's good. It's chopping. Hey, so I mainly wanted to come on here um, and say, because I, I took your advice. I know you had that one video where you're talking about like, hey, if things aren't working out, like move back home if you have that option and kind of readjust. Because um, I was working like full time last year. I was working for a cannabis company. I don't even smoke. And uh, just like super unfulfilled. And I'm, I'm, 20, I'm 26 now, right? And um that feeling only like got worse as I got older. And um, I feel like it's uh, cause I was kind of working against that perpetual clock. And so I, I and you know, how, Elijah, you know how much I hate that fucking clock. If I could yeah. fucking, if I could fucking break everybody's clock of like what they're supposed to do at 25, 30, 40, yeah. 50, 60, bro. I hate that fucking clock. Like nobody. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't even know if it was like self imposed, but like, I, I just, know that I was at home in like Claremont which is like a super slow suburban area in like Southern California I'm just like chilling on like the floor of like my, my parents house I'm just like thinking like like I because I, I basically dedicated my life to like trying to make something happen with music right and so I'm like putting everything I can into like making my guitar sound great all this stuff and I'm just like praying super hard and then like after like six months of being back home like I met my friend, his name's Kifa, and he like hooked me up and left sudden I'm on tour with Roddy Rich. And like within the blink of an eye, like, you know, I'm like kind of like um, to other people, they're kind of viewing me like, oh my God, like that's so crazy. Like I never knew you do this, like da 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 da. 
And so it was just kind of crazy, like for like basically like to overnight to like kind of um, happen. have some sort of something happen with like the music. So I just want to say, you know, following Dude, your I, life. It just makes me so happy. I don't know if you've been noticing because I posted a bunch of Roddy stuff on social. I'm just so about his sound and fuck with him so heavy. And uh, yeah. just hearing this story, just thinking about how the world actually works. It's just so fucking fresh, you know? Yeah. You, you know, what's crazy is that um, I like I talked to Kifa like the day after the album came out. And so he's like, you, you listen to the album yet? I was like, not really. He's like, go listen to the album. So I, I listened to it. We, we hit rehearsals. And then the, the record went number one at the box. I that went number one while we were like rehearsing for tour. So it's like, it wasn't even that big of a deal. Like everything was sold out, but it's like, it was like, like the, like the venues, like they could have been bigger just because like the dude like exploded. He, he's like 11 weeks at number one now, you know, or 11 or 12 exploded. weeks. At... Caught a moment. Yeah. So it's just like, it was just like so crazy. Like just being on tour and all of a sudden like that record just like caught fire. And we're just like, dude, yeah. listen, when I, I talk a lot about this one sentence, doing the right thing is always the right thing. For you, the right thing at that time was taking a step back and getting into that place. If you don't move in with your parents, you, this never happens. The end. Yeah. 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 So currently I'm like here and there, like, so, you know, everything's obviously gotten ca canceled with like coronavirus yes. and everything like that, or at least postponed. Yes. Um, I'm like kind of like floating around. I'm like staying at my cousin's house right now. Do you have your guitar? Um, what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You need to live on Instagram Live and TikTok Live and make TikToks all day. Yeah. Yeah. You need to make four TikToks a day. If I fucking could play guitar, I'd be fucking the biggest person in the world with TikTok right now. Yeah. 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 You need to make four TikToks a day. <laughs> Yeah. Do you have like? Is you remember it, how you just like, remember how uncool the advice of like go home and move in your parents at twenty six sounded? Yeah, that was rough, but you know it worked. <laughs> exactly. Go make four TikToks a day. It will work. Yeah. Is it? Do you? Is, is it just like showcasing? Do you want to kind what of like I, stick? But what I think you should do is look at the trends, both trending dances and trending topics, and then incorporate that with your guitar into however you think about it. Yeah. Right, so I'm gonna look right now, give you an example. So like, for example, right now on TikTok, this, you know, you go into Discover and you kind of look at what's there, right? What's trending right now? Cats, cats of TikTok. Does your cousin have a cat? Yeah. Uh, no, but maybe I could find <laughs> no, one. Relax. Um, you, know, <laughs> uh, you know, like play by play, right? Distance dance, right? So distance dance is exploding. Like, what, like if you like, like right now, with the, the first scene of TikTok is like, yo, distance dance is blowing up. Now let me give you the guitar behind it. And just like fucking riff something, boom, that could be the one that changes your fucking career again. Because Beyonce might see it because she's bored right now looking at TikTok and boom, bro. It's about making. Yeah. Online class is trending. Happy at home, right? At happy at home trend, somebody's the first one mm -hmm. that's trending is somebody playing the fucking piano tell me how that's different than playing the fucking guitar fucking make shit bro but they can play four tiktoks a day elijah i fucking you listen to something once before and already change your life you do this one tiktoks made for music content bro you're fucking sitting at home bored what are you gonna jerk off all day like fucking make guitar shit <laughs> awesome I'm, I'm gonna do that for sure Absolutely. i believe you I believe you. All right, brother. Talk to you soon. Thank you so All much, right. Gary. You got it. Tea with Gary B. Hope everybody's enjoying. Heading into the second hour. Excited about this. Um, I have all sorts of tea companies. By the way, talk about like meta. Like have nothing but tea companies DMing me and hitting me up on email, offering me sponsorship deals to drink their tea on Tea with Gary V. Something that came up three days ago. So like it all can happen. And they're like, oh, but you're Gary Vee. But yeah, I fucking grinded for a decade to put myself in that fucking spot. Right, Michael? Hey, Gary, what's up? What's good, bro? Uh, nothing really. Um, so I got a couple questions for you. Um, the first one, well, to give you a little bit of background, I just finished school. Um, it was uh, an 1,800-hour course to become a mechanic. Got straight A's best possible uh, attendance I could have. Um, I need a career. 
Um, I'm 32. Um, I've been sober now for just under four years. April 3rd will Proud be, you. you know, four years. Thank you. Proud of you, bro. Um, You're drinking that tea life now. Uh, on, it's, it's a bang. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, need, I need a little bit more caffeine this early in the morning. I'm in Florida, so I'm an hour behind you. But um, the question is, is um, uh, for a very, very long time, I suppressed myself um, through, through drugs and alcohol. Yes. Um, I listened to the music that other people listened to because they said that was the music I needed to be listening to. I watched the things on TV that other people were watching because they said that was the best show on. So for so long, I suppressed who I really was, and I feel lost now. Now that mm. the... the the, the, the cloud is gone and the cobwebs have been cleared. I, I find myself sitting, looking around, what should I be liking? Is it okay to like this? Is it, is it okay to show yes. so interest in this? Yes. <laughs> it's, um, Bro, Michael, who's in charge? Right? Me. To your point, you valued other people more than yourself. So who was in charge in high school was whoever the coolest kid was that, you know, who was in charge of girl, who was in charge, this homie, like your whole life to your point up until 28, uh, 29 was, was, you know, was, was about somebody else being in charge. What you, now that things are clearing up, the answer of, is it okay? Is yes to everything because you get to be the judge and the jury. Bro, 90% of my real business friends made fun of me for making garage sale videos the first time I did it a couple years ago. Right. The good news was they weren't in charge. I said, go fuck yourself. Right, right. The answer is, of course. If you're a nerd, then be a nerd because nerds are cool now. If you love cooking, good. If you love ballet for some weird reason, mazel. <laughs> right, right. Of course, the answer is yes. Who are you playing for besides yourself? You right. were playing for everybody else's affirmation. You needed outside affirmation. Absolutely. And that's, where you, and that's why you got fucked up. But now, and what I talk about is inside affirmation. You, just you. That's why I always talk about that Drago shit from Rocky IV, why that hit right. me so hard. He's like, I'll say it again because I love to reenact it. At the end of that movie, when he loses, he's like, motherfuckers, I fought for me. I was in the ring. I wasn't fighting Russia versus America. This was for me, for fucking me. And like, that's where you got to convert. Like, it's all you now. No more mom, dad, uncle, best friends from the past. Pretty girl that you're like, no, you, right. only you. And um, I, have, um, I have one more question. So um, in the process of me getting back to, you know, where, where I'm at now, um, I've had to, I had to write down a lot of what, you know, of, some of my baggage and clear it up a little bit and, you know, of course. through some of the re resentment and, and really process it to, to be able to let it go. 100%. And, um, a big thing was a list of fears. Yeah. And I realized that, you know, getting completely honest with myself, that the, that one of my fears was not only the fear of failure, but the fear of success. Mm. Um, for, for years I've set the bar extremely low. Mm. So any expectation of anybody else was mm. just lost on me because, hey, we know we can't do it. So why even expect anything out of them? That way there was no letdown. I was already Correct. let down. You Correct. know what I'm saying? So of now course. that I know, so now that I know that, you know, I can get good grades and I can get straight A's and I, you know, I just, you know, got a job that, I, you know, I've, I've been yep. working towards and, you know, it's my first job out of drug addiction after a decade is makes more than what my mom's made. And my mom's been at her job for 30 plus years. And so it's like, man, I have, I have the real opportunity to fuck this up. You know, like mm. what if, what if I'm not competent? What if, what mm. if I go in there and straight A's don't mean shit to practical application? Mm. Can and I give you the like, answer? Sure. Absolutely. What, what, you're going down the path of is where you've been, and this is why we gotta fight it. What would happen? Then you weren't a good fucking mechanic, and you move on. <laughs> eighteen hundred hours towards being uh, not. Who so gives good a mechanic. fuck? Who eighteen hundred hours ain't shit. Right. Who who gets to judge you? You're worried about judgment, bro. Absolutely. Like. 1800 hours i don't get like you people spend 1800 hours watching netflix during corona 1800 hours ain't shit 
And number two, what? Somebody's gonna be like, oh, I know what you're worried about. They're like, see, fucking knew it. You had a fucking good, he was good for 18 months, but he's once a loser, always a loser. You're worried about other people's opinions. Yeah, absolutely. Fuck them, bro. I know. No, no, I really, no, no. This isn't one of those, I'm like, you know, like let's, let's play for a second here. Like what? Like what? Like you, you're gonna have to, re, you have to understand, rewire it. I mean, you, let me rephrase. You understand better than 99% of the people here. You've spent the last four years rewiring. Like I, I admire you so much. Thank you. Do you know how hard it is to do be in drug addiction for a decade and actually get out? Most don't. Right. There is nothing you'll ever accomplish professionally that I'll admire more than your ability to get out. It means a lot. I appreciate you already that. won. I actually mean it too, bro. I don't like throwing admiration around. I'm a little bit weird that way. Like, you know? <laughs> right. No, I get I that. I admire yeah. you, man. You Thank already you. won. Who gives a fuck if you're a shitty mechanic? <laughs> Seriously. Then you'll fucking sell hats. I don't know. Right. Like, it's time that you fucking stop worrying about other people's opinions. I don't give a shit when, listen, you know how, I don't know how long you've been following my content. When did you find my content? Probably about two and a half, three years ago. So um, you, you probably know, those, the, those little bites about you know fuck expectation, you know those kind of things. <laughs> that that, that really... probably helped. Yeah, that helped. <laughs> so listen, yeah. bro. This is what I talk. Listen, I play the reverse game. I don't give a fuck that people think I'm a genius or they think I'm the best or I'm going to buy the Jets. I can't hear them. Right. I'm asking you to cut out the boos, the booing. I cut out the cheering. You know why? Because as a kid, I cut out the booing. I didn't give a fuck that Mr. Riddle thought I was going to be a loser. I knew I wasn't going to be. Right. And more importantly, if I was going to be, Mr. Riddle's a loser. And everybody's a loser. I don't give a fuck. Nobody's life has anything to do with mine. And that's that. Uh, you're, you're, you're still in, you're, the reason you're in self-doubt or anxiety of like, does school map to skills here? Will I keep? flourishing, what if I get fired, is because you still actually then care what somebody's going to say about it. And until right. you, you, the way you got off the fucking bullshit chemicals, you need to spend every day reinforcing when, when I fuck up here, when I quit, when I get fired, and everybody's got something to say, I don't care. I'm going to start a pizza shop. I'm going to work at a pizza store. I'm going to ride a bike. I mean, it doesn't fucking matter. Thank you. I appreciate it. Really, I did. Gotcha. It means a lot to me, man. Thanks. Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, I mean, I know a lot of things are easier said than done. Um, they are. For a long time, I had help from people, so I didn't fall completely under the surface. Mm -hmm. And the reasons why I am still alive. So I, I kind of feel like I not so much owe them, but almost you do owe like, them. hey. You do owe them, but you owe them by being happy, not by making money or being a mechanic or being professionally successful. Right. I just want to show them that they're, they're, um, happy. They didn't waste you know, their investment on me. Happy. What do you think your mom, your aunt or your uncle, your best friend, whoever, who are the, give them a shout out. Who are the core people? Um, my, uh, my mom, uh, my fiance, um, and that's my brother, my older brother. Good. And that's, that's about it. That we, we, we Let me promise small. you something on real, on real. You paying them back isn't in the form of you holding a steady job. It's you being a happy human being. And they say that. Just... They need it, dick. <laughs> right. No, I get it. Stop fucking trying to convert some shit into something it's not. Bro, I promise you those three just are fucking grateful you're alive. They don't give a fuck if you're making 110 a year. Right. Bro, just go be happy. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Gotcha. Really. You're the man. Thanks. You are, Michael. I'm really, right. really impressed by you, man. That's a real hard battle. I'm real impressed. Thank you. I love, uh, man, I, I love you, man. Really. You're exactly what I need when I need it all the time. You're so consistent. And again, I mean, 
you're, you, you really get me going. You get me going through hard times a lot of the time. And I appreciate that, that an outside influence, that's not padding, you know, just yep. trying to you tell me what I need to hear. You tell me, you know, what I have to hear. And, and I greatly appreciate that. I appreciate Thank it, Michael. You. Thank you, bro. All right. Yep. Take care. You too. Dakota, what's good? Hey, how you doing? <clears throat> I'm well. I am well. What can I help you with? So, um, for, I've been following your content for about two-ish years. And, um, I really, really love what, not only what you say, but how you say it. And it really resonates with me because I'm all about, you know, leaning in and trying to figure out how people are saying and what they're, what the intent behind what they're saying is. So I really resonate with what you say, how you say it. So first of all, love it. Thank you. Thank so um, I want to pick your brain about something. Uh, okay. So you always talk about loving the process behind what you do. So, yeah. So my question is, in your experience, are, are there any elements to the process that you find difficult to love? No. Nope. Hmm. Right. I figured. Because, because that's not the process. Then. People just want the good parts mm. of the process. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Brother, Dakota people don't love the dirt the way I love it. Mm -hmm. Right. I right. fucking love adversity and fucking, you know, toughness and pain and underestimation. I got chips on shoulders, bro. You're right. You right. understand? Of course. Yeah. No, of course I don't find it difficult. You know why? You believe in me. You, you, you tell me what you and Michael just told me, all that love and compassion, admiration. Fucking that's intoxicating. I love it. Right. Next person comes on and says, you fucking suck, Gary V. You ain't buying shit, motherfucker. You suck. Fuck you, snake oil salesman. You're never buying the Jets. I fucking love that more. Right. Yeah, totally. You know, when I have a great meeting where I love to sell and I'm selling Vayner and we close a $2 million deal and I'm in my fucking element, love. When right. somebody comes in and says the fucking roof is leaking in Chattanooga or we had a flood in LIC or we have somebody with the coronavirus, like, love that too, even more more time general right leader yeah no got no it. like the process is both everybody right. loves entrepreneur everybody loved entrepreneurship the last 10 years until today <laughs> that's true very true now everyone's like wait a minute mm -hmm. right wait a minute i shouldn't have left that job mm. right hindsight everybody loves shit on their mm -hmm. terms that's right. Exactly. Life is. Exactly. That's not how life is. Right. One hundred percent. Yeah. So I guess the the where that question comes from is you know I'm a right now I'm studying music and sometimes there's parts about it that I'm like of course. Uh, like or, yeah, of course. Just, uh, you know so learn, like learn to love uh. yeah exactly and, you know, and and you know what helps learning to love uh? patience mm. exactly yeah that's what I've been trying to like you've been you've been one of like the big, you know, voices on like social media or whatever that I, that I, um, that I'm taking from to say patience, patience, patience. And patience. It, that has helped me so much because. Thank you, bro. That makes me like, so happy. It, it helped me too. Like everything's uh, old mm -hmm. school was uh, for me from fourth grade on eight years of fucking pain punished four times a year, you know, like, you know, right. like it was right. all, uh, you know, mm -hmm. right. Right. So, uh, and I just, and I just, sometimes I just stick, I take, I like your words, they get in there just so you know that, and I know, you know, that you're, you're doing it right. But for me, so you're hearing it from me, it's in there because I just, Kid. I just turned 25 and I'm like, man, Kid. exactly. And like, I got Kid. all this time in the world to like, Dakota, get it. The, the, the bad parts of the process are the most important parts of the process. Right. Exactly. Totally. Love it. Talk to you Love soon, it. bro. Love right. it. Talk Good to you talking. Soon. Love Good it. Good talking, bro. Same. Shit, this is super fun, man. Fuck, I'm loving this. <sighs> Just love this shit. Devin Alexander, what's good? Jeremiah. 
going to get you off mute in a second here. Time there we go. With me today. Jeremiah, how are you? You were I'm on doing mute for spectacular. a second. Good man. Where are you from? I'm from, I live in Boston right now. Where you, where'd you grow up? Uh, upstate New York, Western New York, Geneseo. Love it. Love it. You're a Bills fan? Uh, absolutely. I'm so excited for next year. You should be. This is the most optimistic potential you've had ever. I yeah. still think Josh Allen stinks though. So we'll see what <laughs> all right, we'll what can see. I answer for you? Um, so a couple of years ago, I switched up my content strategy, my personal strategy, because I'm a musician and I try to do a bunch of things online to get my music heard. So I started making videos about cowboy boots and uh, playing songs at the end of the videos to sort of share the fact that I, I do it. music. I love that. So it, it did really well. I went from 80 subscribers to now almost 8,000 in two, th in two years. Um, and it's grown really fast. I have like brand deals. I'm doing giveaways on my YouTube like every month. Real quick, Jeremiah, besides YouTube, where do you put out content to drive outside of YouTube? Where do you put out content to drive awareness to your YouTube? Twitter, Facebook. I have a Facebook boot group as well Smart. Uh, with 1,500 members. Um, Love. Instagram. Um, I've been dabbling with TikTok, but I haven't quite hit it yet. So I guess just spend more time there. How, how often are you posting on TikTok? I've only done like four in the past few months. Um, okay. Bro, Jeremiah, do me a favor. Let the serendipity of this moment force you to make, make two a day. Will do, for dude, sure. Dude, Cowboy Boots is such a good... Oh, dude, you're going to win. I, you're one TikTok. Dude, you're going you're gonna to love me so much in seven weeks. I already love you. I've like... <laughs> More. I've been following you since 2011. More. Thank you, bro. What can I answer for you? So with all of the subscribers that I have, I've been trying to um, increase the sponsorships on my channel. And yep. you are always saying that influencers don't know how to price themselves, but you've never actually said how influencers should price themselves. So that's my question. So what I talk about there is they don't know how to price themselves because they guess yeah. through their management or themselves. So sometimes somebody wants $7,000. So wine text, right? You can tell I'm pretty obsessed about it. We're starting to do an influencer campaign and some people want $3,000 to post and we've got them kind of with their engagement and their numbers priced at, you know, 500 bucks, right? Um, and how do we do that? We look at what we could buy on Instagram's ad product, how much a CPM costs per thousand impressions. And if we know that we can pay eight bucks for wine lovers, well, then that's kind of like how we see it. And if then they're getting 20,000 impressions, we do eight times, you know, 20, you know, for that person. And you just do the math. Okay. Um, other people want a hundred bucks and we've got them mathed out at 4,000. So yeah, people like the way you have to understand if somebody's going to do a sponsorship on your channel, there's the ability for that same boot company to run ads on pre-roll YouTube against people that searched boots on Google against any channel. Now, your endorsement has a value. So it's not just even math. Your cosign has real value. So, the, but for you on your side, that's not your problem. You need to price as high as possible. And when they say no, you're more than welcome to lower the price. Okay. Because your endorsement is a, is a kind of non-tangible, non like for example, I don't do brand deals. I've done one thing in my career where I was a partner with K-Swiss, but I don't do brand deals. But companies have come to me and have offered me real, real money, you know, like on my podcast, uh, you know, hefty six figures just to be like, hey, everybody ask Gary Vee or, you know, hey, everybody, the podcast is brought to you by, uh, uh, let me give you a company like it, but not it, uh, brought to you by Salesforce. Salesforce, a great solution for all businesses. All right, let's get into it. Jeremiah is here today, right? Just to do that, I've been offered mid six figures, right? Wow. And I've said no, because really, honestly, if I'm going to do that, a lot of my audience will be like, huh, Gary's never done that before. That's a big cosign. Let me look at it. Why were they able to get him to do that? And very honestly, if I'm going to do that, I want millions of dollars to even consider it. That's it. Because, but you can't put a tangible value on my cosign just based on how many subscribers or listeners or congruent watchers of this tea with Gary Vee on. So there's, there's, that's always where the gray sits. So is it an outreach game? Because the... Cowboy yes. boot industry is just yes. really traditional. I'm sure they're not yes. even doing the pre-roll. Yes. Right. Yeah. 
It is an outreach game. You should email every single boot company during coronavirus. You've got time. Email every one of them and set and, and play with different titles. Have you seen my boot videos on YouTube? Opportunity for you. That's one title. Uh, Dear Boot Town, uh, YouTube social media uh, collaboration opportunity. Read inside. Like just play, 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 play. And do you think that there is more of an opportunity to? get to them now um, because I've done all of that yes. several times in the past and I've yes. never heard anything. Uh, yes. And maybe you wrote shitty and maybe you Probably. wrote right. How, and tell me the truth, Jeremiah, how many times, how many people have you emailed? Tell the truth. Uh, I don't even know. Like it's, it's uh, every, every single boot company that there is. And then I also email everybody who puts ads on it. my Instagram and it. Facebook. Uh, and I did that like at least three times each. Let me tell you another story. Remember yes. when your content wasn't doing well and then you switched it up and you did boots and it worked? Yes. Your copy on the email title and the pitch is shit. Okay. Good. You're going to email every one of them and try different tactics. You were either too selly, not selly enough. You didn't make it bigger about a social media campaign. Have you, here's something that will super work. Look at the boot company, then go to their Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter, and then write, uh, was bored during the coronavirus? I audited all your social media. Then you give them your opinion on their YouTube, Twitter, and, and Instagram, and then, and then nothing else, nothing else. They'll just see your signature and then your URL to your YouTube channel, and they're like, who the fuck is this? And this was smart. They're going to reply to you minimally saying thank you because you spent 30 minutes of time. Think about how smart what I just told you is. Yeah. That's great. Perfect. Thank you so much, Gary. I appreciate it. Got you, bro. Have a great day, Jeremiah. Thanks for watching. You too. For so long. Peace. Dude, Gary D coming in with more concepts. Guys, today's an action day. You know, I've noticed a lot of you tweeting about it. Um, today's, today's the fucking action day. Uh, big shout out to Brandon Z who just said I'm the coolest motherfucker in the world uh, for alive. Uh, Please hit me up on Twitter. A lot of you have to engage with me way more on Twitter. Uh, but today's an action day. I've given a lot of tactics, a lot of real life shit, a lot of stuff you should be doing. So please do after this. We're going to get off in a half an hour and I want you to fucking do. Hey, Aileen, nope, there, okay. Let me just keep uh, giving some shout outs to people on Twitter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, amazing. Kaiser, uh, Josh Alley. What's good, JB? JB, JBJ. Ooh, this person actually did shave his head. Fuck, I'm thinking about it. Oh no, it was a fake hair. Okay. Sid yeah. shaved his head too. Who did Sid? Yeah, I did see Sid. Brandon Z gave me that love. I want to sign up for Wine Text. I have to follow them. Winetext.com, sign up, make my dad happy. Patience is the key, Miriam. That is true. What's going on, Dustin? You're giving us some shitty uh, transitions here. Were well, we supposed to have like two or three people in the fucking background? Yeah, I, I'm trying to connect Eileen, but I think there's some issues going on. Yeah, I, I, think, when you, I think when you have that problem, you got to throw, oh, actually. <laughs> Hi, Eileen. You're still on mute. Good morning. Good morning, how are you, where are you from? I'm from Miami, Florida. Good, what's cooking? So um, I'm a photographer. I've been doing this for about a year professionally, and um, I'm doing my own portfolio, um, hiring models. I am DMing people, but the DMing is not really going anywhere for me. Um, Are you spamming them? Kind of, yeah. I even got muted by one of my favorite people. <laughs> you, 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 like I said to the last guy, you have to bring people value. I, I try a lot. I, I go with people that I know, um, kind of like you, like I, I emailed you a couple of days ago telling you that I could be your photographer and I could do events and product photography and all of this. And I'm doing that, but I'm not. Are you really offering it for free? Back. Yes. Are, I do a lot of free. Are work. you starting the sentence with like, I love what you do. I'd like to do a free photo shoot with you. No strings attached. Is that what you're writing? Yep. Good. Exactly like so that. then I think let, let's convert it from DMs if you're not getting the cadence there. Let's start leaving comments. 
I started doing that too on Twitter mostly. Let's just do it on Instagram. People- Let's do it on Instagram saying, hey, Roddy okay. Rich, love your stuff. Whenever you're in Miami, I'd love to do some free photography for you. Um, you know, because then some other people may see it in the comments and maybe it's not Roddy Rich, but you might be able to get somebody else. Okay, okay, I'll start doing that too. Um, so I'm kind of stuck right now with photography other than the, the DM thing. I'm not really sure what to do next. Um, I already have a- Are you posting on Pinterest? Pinterest, no, not Pinterest. I'm posting on Instagram, LinkedIn. Oh, wow. um, uh, LinkedIn, I've been doing a lot lately because I just got into it. It's really What's a lot mean? Um, so I just got it about three or four days ago, and I've just been like spamming my whole LinkedIn. <laughs> I think um, I think first you have to post everywhere, and second you have to have strategy to what you're posting. It's not just posting for the sake of posting. Uh, for example, if you post on LinkedIn, hey guys, bored with Corona like everybody else doing a live stream to teach photographers how to be better at photography. If you're interested, email me here. That's gonna get seven people to reply. Live stream, okay. You, you gotta bring value, right? And value can come in a free photo shoot, but when you're super famous, I mean, I get offered free photography 4,000 times a day. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. But, but, but you reaching out to my sister and offering her free photography might matter. You know what I mean? It's like all these different games. You bring value to people by doing live stream and teaching them how to do photography is a flip on it, which then may lead to that person telling their dad that you taught them and then their dad has a, a business that then asks you to do photography. Like it's all about innovation, ideas. Pinterest is a real place that I think you could find some pay dirt. So you should go learn that platform. Um, okay. I think you should start a photography. I think you start a Miami photography group, Facebook group immediately. I'm very high on okay. Facebook groups. I think there's a huge opportunity there. And I like narrow. I like the Miami photography group, right? Okay. You know, so like, those are some ideas. Okay. Sounds good, Gary. Thank you. I just wanted yeah. to tell you one more thing. Um, Please. My boyfriend, he, he, he lost his cousin about a year ago, and he was really, really down. I couldn't even get him out of it. But I showed him your trash talk because he used to do that as a hobby. So I've been showing him the trash talk videos and he's been doing very, very well with his flipping stuff and he has passion and he's happy now. And I want to thank you for doing that for him. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, it's been very hard for us because we're both doing something on the side and um, we're both busy. And I, 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 before you, I couldn't get him out of that, that hole. Thank you so for thank that. you. Thank you. Thank you so much, thank Gary. Thank you so much. Yeah, have a great day. <laughs> You too. Bye-bye. So fun. Thank you guys all for sharing these nice stories. It means the world to me. Um, John does not drink wine. I think I did. There. If you need the backup thing there. Bring it. Tea with Gary V. Today is an action day, Mike Long. iPad Pro, aka Chris Berg in the building. That's good. <laughs> What's going on, man? Life is good. Where are you from? Right, love, uh, Indiana. We're, uh, we're tucked it. away in the woods in uh, Kentucky right now with this whole quarantine stuff going on. Respect. Respect, respect, respect. How yeah, can I man. Help you, bro? Well, hey, first thing, I, I want to do a shout out uh, to all of our service workers. I know they don't get enough credit. Mm-hmm. Nurses, doctors, grocery store clerks, all that stuff, man. They're putting themselves at risk. So um, I know it's not a, it's not really put them on a platform, but they, but they need to um, with all the shit that's going on. I agree, Chris. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, man. Hey, um, so I'm reaching out. Um, I, I own a small boutique uh, real estate firm in Indiana, and I, I live in a Division One college town. And uh, I'm always looking to be different. Uh, I'm not. I'm not into like competing with people when it comes to um, doing the exact same shit that they're doing. So I, I love what I'm doing. I don't need the motivation. Super excited about where my my uh, my team is going. What my where my, where my business is going. But uh, I, I want to be connected to the community a little bit more, to the, to the university. And okay. from what I've researched, and I've researched a lot, nobody's doing what I want to do, which is, can you hear me okay? I can hear you great. I was excited about jumping in. You just said something that excites me, which is um, I really get worried that people think that they have to find something other people don't do. Um, 
I'm pumped that you're about what you're about to tell me. I'm, I'm just, I think that's great too, because that's always a great thing to do. Um, but I want to remind everybody watching right now, a lot of people don't do things because somebody else is already doing it. And I keep reminding people, it's not about that. It's about, are you better at it? Now, if you find something nobody else is doing and you're great at it, it's a fucking monster. So I'm excited to hear what you're about to say. But that's why yeah. I leaned in. That concept of like nobody else is doing it has really been on my mind because I'm like, no, 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 no. You're not, everything's already been done. Stop worrying about that. Yeah. Just be fucking great at what you do. But nonetheless, go ahead. What do you want to do? No, no, you're right. I, I do a little bit of the other stuff too, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure for the next, for the next niche. I get right? it. So, you're innovating. I um, innovate all the time. Yeah. Wine let's do it. So, Chris, I expect you to sign up for winetext.com. Man, I, I heard you say that earlier and I'm like, Gary's just going to pound me with text messages. So, and no, I love one wine. a day. Well, do you like wine? Love it. Dude, it's only one a day. Like, honestly, like we literally sold a 40, every store in the country, $48 Pinot Noir yesterday, eighteen fifty a bottle, free shipping. Like, it's the That's greatest thing. No, no, dude, it's every day's a steal. It's like, oh, it's Groupon at its best year one for wine. And the friction is insane. You get the text and you just reply four. And here's yep. my biggest thing. The fuck are you buying wine from somebody like some supermarket that you don't give a fuck? You actually like me and it's a better price than the shit you're buying. It makes no fucking sense. Hey, I have some girls and I'll get your take on this. I have some, uh, some girlfriends who are in this, uh, this clean crafted wine, no headaches, all type of, all that type of stuff. What's your take on that? On that? Wine has natural sulfites in it. Yep. Like, I, I think it's a marketing ploy. I, I think, think it's, it's working. working. <laughs> of course it's working. The brain is the most underrated thing of all time. If I tell you you're not going to get a headache, you're not going to get a headache. Right, right. I think it's garbage wine with a good positioning that tricks people. And that doesn't bother me either. But I think you, Chris, should sign up for winetext.com. <laughs> I'm in. Just because you said it. All right, go ahead. go ahead. All right, so uh, University of Town, um, you know, the, the university of town that I'm in hired over a hundred faculty last year, and that's fairly high wage uh, positions. Um, and then there's also the, it's a very transient type of job as well. So professors, uh, faculty, tenure and clinical, they're transient and they're always moving town. So it's, it's this base that I would get. Well, the hiring process is very departmental or compartmentalized. So let's just say the uh, business school hires their own professors and then they would recommend a brokerage. Now you can't steer um, brokerage. You can't steer the, the new, um, the, the new employee to a brokerage, but you can recommend, but I would love to be the brokerage of the university. And it's, it's a interesting conundrum because it's uh, the university is a state school um, and you can advertise, but it's, you know, $25,000, $50,000 per year to do that. And that, you know, being a small brokerage, I don't have the funds for that yet. So, but you could, you could also run pre-roll ads on YouTube based on people searching the university on Google um, okay. and completely crush it. Let me explain. If you're a professor that's coming in, or if you're just somebody considering the school, a million different variables. Um, but let's just talk about, to your point, very, when I heard you say 100 people, I'm like, okay, and high net worth, and they move around. Like, this is good business for you. It makes sense. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things you can do is Google AdWords and YouTube pre-roll based on the university and intercept a lot of those people and build awareness that way and not have the school and the 25 to 50 K be the toll booth, but have Google be the toll booth for a fraction of the price. Let me Love give you it. a That's scenario. What I was looking for. Yeah. You got it. Let me give you a big pretend. I'm professor Vaynerchuk at, you know, Brown. And now I'm transferring to this place. So I'm definitely going to Google the university. That's like money in the bank. Uh, that night I go to watch a wine video on YouTube and the pre-roll is literally you and you're saying, hey, are you going to, Indi are you considering to move to or around Indiana University? And I'd be like, what the fuck? And then, and then <laughs> I'm gonna listen to you. That shit is gonna convert like fucking crazy. And you're gonna get other people by accident who are just yeah. searching the university or a parent who's like, I wanna move, I miss my kid, I'm moving by the university. Like, you know, there's a million other people you're gonna get for a fraction of the cost. Google arbitraged all those kind of things. You just have to be good at knowing how to target and you have to be good at the video that converts them. But that's what you should do, Chris. 
No, I like uh, you're giving me direction, and that's what I uh, wanted to, to get with you with. Hey, before I leave, I got to tell you this, that I've been watching you for a couple of years, which a lot of people have, but uh, my wife was uh, listening to you one day, and she was like, that guy is so loud and annoying. Like, she goes, why do you listen to him? I'm like, because he's always positive. So I told her I was going to come on the show or possibly be on the show today. She goes, with the loud guy? I'm like, yeah, with the fucking loud guy. She goes, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I totally get it. You know, like it's really fascinating. My communication style obviously makes a lot of people love it. And then there's definitely a group that doesn't love it. But to your point, what I'm proud of and long term, what ends up happening is it's what's being said, not how it's being said. Um, and, and most of all, and this has been a theme of this whole day. I just know how to be me. And do I know that if I talked more in this tone and tenor, like I'm talking right now versus how I get on stage no, I mean, sometimes? The right? way you do it is it's just, right. It, it's right because it's me, right, Chris? Yeah. Just like for you, the way is right is not to replicate me, but to do it your way. And, uh, and hopefully one day I'll win over the wife. Well, you know what's undeniable is you're positive. doesn't matter if you're talking to a 12-year-old or an 80-year-old. You're always positive. You never downplay anybody. You, you appreciate their position. And that's exactly what you do. And I, and I appreciate that as well. I think everybody does. That's why, that's why you're so popular. So, Thank you. Yeah. Listen, here's my secret plan with wine text now. I just realized why I wanted you to be on it so bad. You're going to get such a ridiculously delicious wine for such a cheap price. Your, your wife's going to drink it and be like, Chris, it's like the best wine I've ever had. And you're going to be like, the loud guy. Gary V said so. <laughs> Love it. Talk <laughs> to you soon, brother. All right, man. Take care. Bye-bye. Hi, Susanna. <gasps> Hi, Gary. Oh my God. I am such a huge fan. I can't believe that I'm actually talking to you right now. This is like, thank you. I'm going to have a little moment here. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for being who you are and just inspiring me so much every day. I, um, I read your first book and I'm in the process. Well, I do audiobooks, So I'm doing the audiobook version of it now. Do you like, do you like that? I read it. I love it because you give these like extra little things. You always go off line. Like you're like, I have to add this <laughs> in because this is new. This has changed. And it's just like, it's amazing. I love it. Thank you. Um, I feel like I want to ask you a million different questions, but I'm going to try to stick to one. Uh, and you kind of covered some of the things that I've been feeling with one of the previous calls. Um, but I'm going to ask anyway. So I feel like I have a lot of different interests and I've always been this way. I've always like not really had like one thing that I felt like I was like really good at or that was like calling to me. And I've, and I feel like now I'm 33 years old. Maybe. I have two kids and yeah. Um, and I just feel like I'm not going like I'm still kind of like moving from like one place to the other and like trying different things. And I'm, and I want to be in a place where I'm like, okay, this is what it is. This is, and Why? we're going to like make moves. Why because do you want it to be? Are you tired? Do you think you should? Or do you enjoy being a Renaissance woman? You know, everybody makes this thing as a negative and I think it's a positive, but I think society is more structured and wants school and wants kids right. and family. You know, my, my simple question is why do you want to fight? Like why is for you as a human, not an ideology or something that was put in your head for you, you, why? Because I feel like I want to be great at something. Why? Maybe what about being just great about being, I'm being serious about what I'm about to say. What about just being great? in being Susanna. But what does that mean? Like, I don't, I can't wrap my head around what that means. Like it, in my mind, like I want to be like a pro professional or not a professional, like a expert at something. Like, why? I don't know. I don't know. I well, like literally, this is a great conversation. This is what's fun about this, right? Like, like this is why, this is why I have the enormous blessing of people following me because I'm good at this thing of like talking, right? Like, like 
I think it's yeah. a really, I think it's a powerful question. Like, why do you need to be an expert in something? Like, for whom? For, you know, and why? And how did that become an ideology? And what does it mean? I mean, do you want to be an expert because that will put you in a position to make a lot more money? Without that would be a reason why. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just trying to get to why. You know, I think that it, yes, there comes the, the more money aspect. Let's of talk it about for that sure. for a second. Let's talk about that for a second. Okay. I could, I would argue that that might be the whole reason and that's, and that, or like a big chunk and that would be okay. What you'll appreciate is if that's the case, we might be able to actually get there through a different path, which is why I'm knocking on this door. Mm-hmm. You know, okay. like maybe you, th- you know, this could be subconscious. You think being an expert or great at something will then lead to leverage to make it financially sound. That, that makes sense to me. That's logical. I might, but I would argue with you that maybe that's not the way you should do it. Like, like, first of all, you have to figure out how to monetize something. There's a lot of people who are massive experts at shit that don't make a fucking dollar because they don't know how to build a business. Mm. See where I'm going? Yeah. So -hmm. like, I'm fearful that the expert thing is the logical step in your mind. But then when we become an expert at fucking, because we stumbled on you being the best at making raspberry jam, you still don't know how to fucking sell raspberry jam. I'm still going to have that void where I'm going to be still thinking that I need something more or that I need Maybe. To- or, or again, you're, you're putting this in a negative box. I'm super proud that I do a ton of shit. I know. And I hear you say that all the time. And it made me feel so good about doing that too. Cause I'm like, okay, so Gary does that. And he's obviously very successful and in, in a lot of different things. And you were saying how, to you, it's okay to do 10 different things. That's just who you are. That's so, what you function yeah. and that's how and, it works and, for you. Yeah. And I, I think, first of all, being a mother of two in itself is like the fucking big game, right? There's, first of all, just that. It's very big. It's very big. I, I have a two and a half year old and a one year old. So they're like so tiny super big. and it's really crazy. Um, but I feel like I'm like chasing my tail constantly. Good for you. Like, right, you, you should. Know, I'm you want something? You, not... want to, you want to do something in addition to. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's not, because I, I know they're going to go to school when they're a little older and I'm going to be like, okay, so I? now yeah. what? Yeah. yeah. What do so, I, and I don't want to get to that point. Of, I want to figure it out. Who, who were you as a girl? Like as a little girl, what were you into? Um, I was into like, I don't even know, like, Stickers like new kid, and new gymnastics. Kid, new, like new kids, new kids on the block. Oh, like music-wise? Well, sync. I don't know. Yeah, Backstreet Boys. Okay, Spice this is an Girls. important question. This this will give me a huge <laughs> insight to you. Which okay. which in sync or Backstreet Boys or ninety eight degrees kid did you think was the cutest? <laughs> okay. Um, Backstreet Boys, that like okay, Brian. I like Brian too. He was sweet. I don't know if you remember. Of course Brian. I do. He yeah, had like a sweet. Nice. He had like a sweet vibe. Yeah. Kevin like freaked me that. out. He was too old. He felt like yeah. Right. He yeah, like he a little like, creepy. Yeah. You know, like, I was like, he, like no. your dad, not like your cute, cute neighbor. Right. Like and I didn't yeah. like to go for. Hey, my husband. Um, and um, I didn't like the the main one that like everyone liked. I kind of like the you know because Brian wasn't like the main one. I don't think. No, he wasn't. Wasn't I it like Nick, Nick? Nick? Nick Carter? Nick, Nick, yeah. Nick. He was Nick. pretty dreamy. I yeah. get it. Whatever. Anyway, nonetheless, but yeah. what, where I'm going with all of that is the thing most likely is the thing that you actually liked the most from zero to 22 is most likely the place where you'll find the most success because it's predicated on interest and passion, which then means you'll persevere through the tough times because you actually like sewing. You actually like soccer. You actually like 98 Degrees and Nick Lachey. Like, so I'm trying to go to the place that is your interest graph because interests like tend to really play out nicely yeah. in this scenario. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely agree with you. And I think I probably heard it from you a million times. And that's what I've been trying to dig into. So like I went to school, I'm a speech language pathologist. Um, and I think that I pretty much did that because that's what my parents were like, you should do that. That's like a safe thing, even though right now it's not that safe because this pandemic and we're fucking not able to actually go see patients. So it's 
just like, that's what I did after I graduated, I started working. I worked in a couple of different settings and to just try to, to try to see like, do I want to work with adults? Do I want to work with kids? Like, do I like this population? Do I like that population? And, um, in the meantime, I got certified as a Pilates instructor. My <laughs> husband has a physical therapy practice. So I started working with him to try to like, you know, to, he's, he's a physical therapist. So like yeah. Pilates and physical therapy go hand in hand. Um, I started doing some newborn photography. Like I am all over this the is, place. And you are, <laughs> you are making the same mistake that most people make. Like I'm sitting here smiling, fired up. And, and you think like 98% of the world thinks that that means you're not focused and that you like, and that you're all over the, all over, all over the place is the biggest strength in the world. And everybody thinks it's bad because everybody thinks like the system. Right. And you clearly, you know, back to your story, like if your parents are like saying, like, like you like have followed the game, I get it. You have demonized all over the place. Yet, even though following the game, you have gone out and followed your soul and have tried tasting different things. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm proud of you. I think that's great. Thank you. I, I, just, I, I, I kind of don't want to just Susanna, keep being a beginner at everything stop. all the time. You, 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 know? put, you put school and certification and expertise on a pedestal and it is not. No, yeah, no, it's not. I, I I'd much rather you, I don't, I'd much right. rather you do 11 more things between now and 54 and at 54 realized that you were a horse whisperer and no, nobody has a better connection to horses than you in the world and that you're getting paid $50,000 to consult against horses in fucking Kentucky because when you come and pet them and whisper to them, they run faster. Maybe that's your destiny. Maybe, but... What I, what I kind of wanted to say was that I was, uh, since I was like, okay, I'm a speech language pathologist. I went to school for this. Let me try to see if I can like find, you know, something that happiness I really enjoy. It. It, yeah. Yes. Happiness in it. I'm already in it. It's the thing that I have the most experience in technically at this point. And, and, and so I was like, the one thing that I haven't tried yet was really working for myself. Good. And that's something that I think I've always wanted to do. I remember when I was in college, Good. my dad's like, what do you want to do? And I was like, I want to major in business. And he's like, what do you want to do with that? Open up a business? Like, he's, he, was, he was just like, what? I'm also Russian. We came from the former USSR. I feel like you're like my older, wiser, big brother. <laughs> that's why I like feel this, like, I love listening to you so much. And um, they have a, you know, mentality that you – can probably understand, but your parents were entrepreneurs. My parents were not. So it's a different mentality. Um, and so I think they were kind of very like, don't do that. That's hard. That's scary. That's unknown, whatever, all Susanna, that stuff. What it was discouraging my whole life. Susanna, knowing the place you come from, I know that 33 is like an old bag from where our parents came from. Uh, but listen to me. Oh, yeah, I totally. Right? It's like if you were if like at 33, you're like fit it. Like if you're not a grandma by 42 in the old I country, know, you know? I know. So I, you know, I have a lot of empathy for that. Listen to me. You're young as fuck. You clearly have entrepreneurial DNA. You, sh you know, because of communism, a lot of your family that is your parents' parents and parents' parents' parents might have been entrepreneurs, but it's not known because it was so suppressed and so scary to do that. Right. You need to go scratch that itch while in parallel, you need to start a baking company and do pumpkin pies. Like, do not say no for yourself. Okay. And, and like Instagram and things like that, like when trying to develop a personal brand. Yes, all those um, things. Like things that I post, it's, it's all it's okay to just like one day post about Pilates next day post yes. about feeding yes. therapy the next day post yes. about my kids yes. and like yes you know because not just because feel like it's confusing no it's not confusing it's Susanna it's me got right it. and that's got all it. of those things got it yeah right me talking about the New York Jets and garage sailing and sports cards and th that potentially is confusing it but it's not it's who I fucking am mm. Yeah. So it's all those things. Okay, cool. Welcome. Thank you so much. Um, one last thing, if you can, it's like a pretty general question, like just being in this moment in time in, with this pandemic, is there anything that you think is like, um, 
I don't know, just kind of like a good like strategy that you might be, if you can even talk about it, like you, that you're doing or that you can give advice to anyone else out there. Gratitude. Yeah. Do you, do you understand that this pandemic happened in 1991? You and I wouldn't be talking oh, to each be other. Fucked. because fucked. I know. We, 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 we wouldn't have human connection. No mm-hmm. internet. This is the greatest, greatest time to like reset, be thoughtful, be grateful. Gratitude. Gratitude will get everybody through this. I don't care. People, people, and now somebody's watching like, how do I be grateful when I lost my job? I'm like, by being grateful. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, life is twists and turns. You know that because where our families come from, uh, there's people. I, I'm an optimist. I think somebody's life got saved because of Corona, because if they were actually living their normal life, today was the day they were going to get hit by a car. Yeah. But there's so like gratitude. also opportunities right now. Unlimited. Like, and yeah. Make content, make content, make content. I got to run. I got to get to this conference call. Bye. Thank See you, Gary. Everybody, thank you so much for another episode of Tea with Gary V. I will be back tomorrow, 9 a.m. Tea with Gary V. If you enjoy this, please take a screenshot right now. Let me, hold on. Let me set up. I'd like you to take a screenshot of this and share it on social with the link. Sitting, sitting, giving you a chance here. Please take a screenshot and tweet it, Facebook it, Instagram it. Actually, we're going to do this. Team, this is what I want to do. I'm going to take this. If you're watching, screenshot this, take a photo of it, post it on your Instagram with hashtag T with Gary B. Post about the show, your comments, how you've been seeing it, how you enjoy it, but put hashtag T with Gary B. Post it on your Instagram. My team is going to go into the people that post right now with that hashtag on Instagram in a couple hours, look at everybody who did it and DM several of you to be the questions for tomorrow. That's how we're gonna do questions tomorrow for yes. everybody who takes a photo of this right now and puts it in their Facebook, Instagram feed, not stories, in their feed with the hashtag T with Gary V and a couple of sentences on why they like the show, why they don't like the show, whatever it is. So here we go, I'm gonna set up again, two more seconds. We also uh, mentioned the fact that some international people can't get on community, so this would be a good opportunity for them. Uh, can they hear that, what no, you just said, or no, do I have to say it? You have to say it. Uh, so just, Dustin just informed me that this is the opportunity for international people to get on, because we've been taking the questions from community, my 212-931-5731. So now Canada, Europe, everybody stand up. Here's your chance. Putting on Instagram, T with Gary V. Tell them why it's good. See ya. Thanks, everybody. Love you guys so much. Thanks, team. Thanks, Dustin. See everybody. See you tomorrow. <laughs>